Hello, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Patrick, and I'll be your chief flight attendant today. We'll begin the show in a few minutes, but first I'd like to acquaint you with some important safety information. Three sheets to the mouse may contain language and subject matters that aren't suitable for smaller aviators, so listener discretion is advised. When the intro music begins, please take a seat and partake of any carry-on items. This includes bottles, flasks, cans, fine cigars, and skin mags. Okay, let's review. That is, F-bombs, earmuffs, get drunk, smoke them if you got them, and send nudes. Anything else? Oh yeah, enjoy the show. Sorted, but you'll be rewarded when at last I am given my dues. And injustice deliciously squared. Be free, free. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 288 of Three Sheets to the Mouse. We're the podcast that likes to focus on the adult side of Disney, from parks to movies to dining. We'll cover everything Disney has to offer, including their drinks. My name is Mikey, and there's just two of us tonight. I've also got Adam with me, fresh off the prin- yes. Princess Half Marathon. Yes. Uh, and and believe it or not, we're not going to no. talk about it. That's some shit, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about these re- this particular race, so I don't think I need to go into it again. It wasn't as bad this nope, time, nope. but it still, I think this is the worst course we've, I've ever ran in Disney. It was, ah, it was, it was darn it. Well... They're not. They haven't been trending that mm-hmm. well lately, as as the races have gone on for 2024, I guess. But as I said, grab yourself a drink. We're gonna get going here because it's just just a dose of us. Uh, this is a little. Uh, I think this is the first time we're just doing one together. Yeah, I feel like I'm Will Smith and and you're my son, and it's just the two of us. Daddy loves you. You know, he did that song no. with. Young Will Smith. Uh, I'll take your word. Is it Jaden? Jaden. Yeah, they think that's right. Jaden. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, I'll he... take your word for it. Okay. I, not a big. I know you're going to be shocked. Don't listen to Will Smith all that much. Well, I mean, there were very few options in the late 90s, early, early knots, I guess. For Will Smith music? Um, it was either Will Smith. Uh, no, like on, on the, the radio, everybody played Will Smith and, and then the Kid Rocks and the, them. Some soggy biscuits. Yeah, that, those I remember. I do not remember this particular. Oh, see, it was his his song for his son. That he was like, one of these days, I'm going to make a movie with you. He did. It flopped. <laughs> I thought it was a great movie. No, but I don't think it did I really well. I enjoyed it. Yeah, but it's because people are used to seeing Will Smith from Men in Black and Cowboy Movie. Wild Wild West. Wicked Wicked Wild Wild West. Oh, because that was a bad movie. That was not but we're not talking about Will Smith <laughs> no. tonight. I was going to say, he does have a Disney connection because the genie uh, travesty. <sighs> that was so bad. Or it made me watch it. I'll never forget. I, I would. Uh, not good. No, I, I paid money to watch that in a fancy theater that served alcohol. and There wasn't enough of it. Yeah, I can see how that would be not enough. Nope. That it, no, it was not good. Nope, and I, and I had to just sit there and be quiet the whole time because Stephanie hates when I talk during movies, and I had a lot to say, so I just I just kept drinking and eating. Yeah, if, if I actually saw this particular movie in the movie theater, this is when I'd be counting ceiling tiles yeah. and speakers. It just was not good. No. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about Will Smith. <laughs> no. Or the Bad Genie movie. We're not even going to say its name. Nope. Lest we sully the reputation of the predecessor. Exactly. It's just the Bad Genie movie. No, nope. we're here to talk about some drinks. And speaking of, Adam, what are you uh, partaking of this evening? Well, we were closing up on February, and I kind of saw some pictures of myself and not exactly, not totally happy with what I saw, not miserable with what I saw. So, looks like Dry March is coming up for me starting tomorrow. I mean, yes, <laughs> it is the first. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a few beers um, from Trogues. Right now, I have the Blizzard of Ops. And then I'm going to the lolly hops after this, and I only have like three, so. 
gotta lose a few pounds just for me. Just for you, and you know, it, it just makes you feel better when you get on the scale, and you're like, I done it! And no scale, just my like, clothes aren't fitting real well, and I Ah, uh, I gotcha, I gotcha. I've got a pair of pants that I've already come getting into, and it's not because they're the wrong size, I think it's because I'm the wrong size, but I've also got another pair of pants, the exact same brand, exact same cut, exact same size, I gotta wear a belt. I have columbia same size different shorts and one i can't close and one is too big yeah <laughs> damn it come on government you, you want to standardize everything let's let's work on that <laughs> i mean we have standardized tests why can't we have standardized exactly. sizing exactly <laughs> let's get that make that a thing and and can we get an oversight committee to look at these damn easy open packages because half the time they don't easy open or when you go to open it you rip the whole thing apart you can't reseal it now funny story about this is you know we're staying in disney we have a nice resort we're staying in a two-bedroom villa you know you bring snacks and stuff you have a refrigerator so we had rip open crackers yeah tried ripping from the one side couldn't rip halfway up <laughs> still bagged and open tried opening up the other side ripped the other half off so i just have this chunk in the middle that is not letting me open the damn bag i ended up because you know you, you're not allowed to fly with scissors because flying is just as dangerous as running with them i mean yes i've seen a lot of accidents <laughs> so i'm sitting there with a knife and i'm scoring the fucking packaging to fucking open this fucking bag i was so fucking angry nobody else saw me do this but i was just like cursing under my breath it just was not that would have been, it's just the kind of thing that it makes for a better silent observer experience to just someone to sit back and be like okay let's see how he oh no oh no oh okay no no don't get the knife. You're going to cut yourself and not the box. I made sure I didn't cut myself. That would have been me. And there was a lot of like, I just want this open now. Right? I came really close yeah, to I was going to say, you were about the first caution to the wind. At oh, that yeah. point, it was less about actually enjoying the crackers and is more about winning. Except what was, I did finally get them open and realized they didn't like them all that much. <laughs> So, all the more reason to have stabbed them, I think. <laughs> exactly. All right, Mikey, what are you drinking? Uh, well, uh, this will be a shocker, but um, I went to Aldi's the other day. No. Picking up some lovely goodies for dinner and stuff, and I like to walk down the, the wine aisle and see if they get anything new and hope and pray that my Aldi's is going to start carrying hard liquor, but they haven't yet. Uh, but I did find a bottle of wine that was a little interesting. It's a Chardonnay that is aged in bourbon barrels. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you usually hear a lot of red. It's usually red. Aged. That's right. That's right. So I was like, huh, we'll give this a go. It's called Quarter Cut, which is the absolute lamest name for something because it's probably an Aldi's brand kind of thing. Like they're mid, oh, they're mean, mid-level Aldi's wine brand not, or something. But I mean, you think about it, Quarter Cut, maybe trying to play off of like Angel's Cut. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. Or Devil's Cut. Yeah. So it's not awful. For wine, anyway. Uh, it's 14.5%. It was like $9. Is it any good? It's not bad. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I'm down to a little less than half the bottle. Okay. It's weird. It's kind of got like like a slight pear kind of thing. Okay. And then you get you get the bourbon notes after that. A little subtle. More more woodsy than uh, okay. than vanilla. But all in all, I really I really do like it. I'll, I'll get it again. Okay. Cool. I mean, I'm just curious because... Bourbon barrel aged stuff has a tendency to be very bourbon forward. Right. At least the stuff that I've had. And for a white that's usually a little more delicate, mm-hmm. it makes that aging process, I guess, a little more dangerous because bourbon can easily overtake a white, in yep. my opinion. So I guess maybe it's aged a little bit less in the barrel. It might be. I don't know if it says on there. No, there is no no aging. It It is a, a California wine okay. bottled in 2022. Okay. That is everything I know about this. <laughs> Fair enough. But like I said, it was good. I'll have it again. Well, that's what we're having. <laughs> Beer and wine. So <laughs> <laughs> the way to do it. when we're done, we're going to go to the races and then maybe the casino. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but let us know what you're drinking on our Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com slash group slash three sheets. Uh, if you're not a member, join the... Uh, you i guess um and we'll get an astromech droid dispatch to get you in soon um <laughs> <laughs> also known as maria yes <laughs> yes maria 3po will be out there as soon as possible uh to bring to, 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 to get you in no, she's much more maria d2 that's true m2d2 <laughs> mrd mrd2 that's what it is 
just look for the angry the angry droid that, that'll let you in <laughs> and then run the other way <laughs> <laughs> or she may just punch you who knows yeah it's, it's slap you or like, yeah, no, it's I, a, she might bite it's just a little <laughs> light bludgeoning that's all it's all out of love it comes from a place of love of what we're not quite sure no. but it's definitely of love <laughs> seltzer it comes from a place of love <laughs> of seltzer so, if you've ever wondered how angry a LaCroix can be, well, <laughs> that's Maria in a nutshell, I think. All right. So, uh, here's the thing. This is February 29th. That's right. I found out I said February because I'm not shortchanging myself on all the letters that are in the month. I say library. I say February. Y'all can suck it. Tomorrow being the 1st of March, it begins the sixth season, the sixth year of the Miami Mafia, the Fernandez brothers, crafting this bracket challenge to kind of coincide with uh, March Madness. And it has grown. Um, I would say it has absolutely evolved over the years mm. from, I think, a small bracket the first time to different divisions the next time. Yes. We've had different leagues. We've had there's been a whole bunch of stuff. It has been a a ride, and this year Michael Fernandez was very excited to bring bars back. And this year's uh, March drunkenness madness is bar madness. So the Fernandez brothers, I don't know who did most of the work. I'm just going to go ahead and include both of them in it. Have laid out four brackets, each one with sixteen teams, sixteen bars, four different divisions. And uh, the voting will begin tomorrow on our Facebook page to vote for your favorite or your preferred bar or lounge as they are paired up against the others. And I'm going to be honest, we have definitely got some Cinderella stories in the in the wings and then some... Well, we've had some Cinderella, Cinderella stories in the brackets win before. We so. have. We've got some first-timers this year and some absolute nobodies, in, in my honest opinion. <laughs> wow. I mean... <laughs> I mean, also, if you want to upset a bracket, feel free to vote for that one as well and make it a little interesting. So. <laughs> yes, uh, like, like I said, those are going to be posted starting tomorrow, and he's going to post two different matchups a day until right. we get all the way through it. And that's, I mean, the math is four times all of them equals a bunch. Correct. Maria's not here to do the math, so I have to do my best. That's right. <laughs> and I'll let you in eventually. This episode, we're going to just kind of walk through the brackets, maybe give some, uh, I don't know, some of our picks. <laughs> don't side with us because we're going to be wrong. A majority of the time. We have the wrong opinion. And uh, Maria's not here to correct us. Right. So. Yeah, it's, just, it's me and Adam, so really, it's, it's great. Um, <laughs> so uh, then I guess we'll just get started with uh, the first region. He's got the Horizons region, which is a callback to a beloved area of Epcot that I have never seen because it was dead when I went. It's an attraction, but we won't get into that. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter about it being missing or anything. It was basically one of my favorite attractions growing up because it was the first time you got to kind of choose your ending and depending on how many votes it got. And it was almost like a continuation of Carousel of Progress. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it was very similar. It had a similar feel as the Carousel of Progress, but not exactly, obviously, because it was going much more into the future. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll just, you know what? I'll just ask Martin's vids to show it to me next time I'm on the YouTube. Yeah, definitely. I'll check it's it out. It's a fun one. Good on you, Michael, for memorializing it here. There's 16 teams represented in this. Adam, do you want to take the left and me take the right? Sure. That works. All right. So we're starting off the first match between La Cava de Tequila and Finn's Bar. I had a look at where Finn's Bar was. I have never been. Um, it is at the Swan and Dolphin, the Swanfin? It is at the Dolphin. Okay, okay, the Dolphin. Because of how I know it's spelled with a PH, I, I get Finn's, I guess. Okay, I kind of see it now, but, you know, I wasn't totally sure. Yeah. So I, I have a feeling Finn's Bar is going to lose this, this one. This is, but... like, not, I mean, this is like a... <laughs> Makava, I would say, is probably like, uh, he doesn't have seating on this, but if I was seating it, I'd say that Makava's probably like a, an eight seed, um, maybe 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 as high as like a, a five, and then Finn's is just happy to be here. 
Fair enough, but I don't know what seeds mean unless we're planting them. Right. I mean, the, the smaller the number, the better the team, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I have no way. I'll, I'll take the but, word for it. Yeah, I would. I, yeah, this, that's this. That would be kind of a no-brainer. I mean, everybody loves La Cava. It's got a lot going for it. Location inside the pyramid, the decor, the service. From what I remember, is is is, is, is typically good. I mean, it's it's good. It, the only problem I have with La Cava is that it, there's always a line. It's so small. Yeah. And it's very hard to get seating. Mm -hmm. If you do get seating, ever, I've got, I'm not, I haven't had bad service there, but it's just, if you get seating, they, ha they do offer snacks and a little bit more of a tequila experience or a tequila flight if you're interested in yeah. it. But, Casa Dragones. Um, yes, exactly. And, right. and Finn's so bar may two? have good stuff too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. I've never been to Finn's bar, so... This one might be an interesting matchup because I don't think a lot of people have gone to either one of these. So it's the Scat Cats Club, and this is actually located at Disney's Port Orleans, French Quarter. And then we have the Cabana Bar and Beach Club, which is located at, again, it, this is in the Dolphin as well. Okay. Hmm. I don't have a pick on this one. I would probably lean towards Scat Cats, but... If, if for no other reason than the name is cool? Yeah. I mean... I, I can see people picking the name if they haven't been now, to I can see one. that one being just because of the location, because Port Orleans is a pretty popular resort for people to go by and visit. And you've got Correct. the River Roost there uh, as well. Well, this is in the other... This right. is in the French right. Quarter. Right, this is the French Quarter. So, uh, it's just a short boat ride on the Sasagouli. Yeah, I mean, you can walk all technically yeah, you walk can cross, over. Uh, what is that Old Man's Island? Is that uh, how mm -hmm. you cross it? You might find a Brent Burke sleeping in a hammock randomly when you do that. True story. <laughs> it really, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would go scat cats on this. So, I mean, I guess we're in agreement so far. <laughs> yes, I, it's shockingly so. All right, so next up, we actually have Rivers Roost, Rivers Roost, and it's going up against Rick's Sports Bar. This is another one that might, this can go either way. I've been to Rick's. I haven't been to Rick's Sports Bar in a very long time, but the drinks there were pretty good. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I don't know how this one might go. Here's the deciding factor, I think, on this, and it's a guy named Yeehaw. Yeah. I mean, unless you really know. want to watch sports, there's. But Yeehaw's not there all He's the time. He's not there all either. the time. That's true. So I mean, it, it just if you happen to catch him, that's great. But if you don't, you're out of luck. And it's just like it's a small bar. It's not a huge bar area. Right. Well, and I also think that likely people go to the roost to see bob typically so if someone looks at this they're going to remember that they went there and they caught bob performing Probably. and that's what they're going to think about most certainly if you go if you you know resort hop to river roost you're going to try to pick a time where you can catch yeehaw bob it makes sense that's actually a really good matchup those those last two are really good not not like the kava and, and Vince. <laughs> yeah well this one's another weird one so we have kimonos, which is also in the Swan and Dolphin, or the Swal Swalfin area. I'm not sure which one it was in. And we have Steakhouse 71. I've heard great things about kimonos. I have never made it there. The best thing I heard about it is that they do actually offer karaoke. Disney karaoke, I believe. I don't know if it's just Disney karaoke, but they do. I'm sure it's in Disney. I, don't, I can't see how they would not offer some sort of Disney themes or Disney songs. Yeah, some kind of set list. However, Steakhouse 71, I've been pleasantly surprised every time I've gone there. And it's a great place to just grab a quick drink and then head to the bus if you're heading down to Springs from Magic Kingdom. And that's at the Contemporary, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. It replaced the um, Wave. The Wave. I've been to the Wave. Mm -hmm. I've had a drink there once with Man of Mystery himself, Chris Carter. Um, what I've heard from uh, those that have been to it is it's a, a great place to grab a drink. Yeah, I have. I mean, I actually ate there the last time I was at Steakhouse 71, so I, I couldn't tell, talk just from the bar, but they do have some interesting bar choices. Okay. I can see Steakhouse. Th that could be an interesting one. It's two entirely different atmospheres, too. Like, yeah. if you've got a karaoke bar, that's going to be not necessarily raucous, a bit different. but it, it's going to be upbeat and, and more interactive and, and jovial, and Steakhouse 71 is, you know, more laid back kind of kind of thing, so... That'll be an interesting uh, matchup to see how it plays out. I like that matchup. Those last three, I really enjoy. So, to go all the way, who are you choosing? Oh, from the left side of this? Uh, mm -hmm. La Cava. Same. I mean, it's either going to be, I think in my opinion, it's either going to be La Cava or Steakhouse. 
that might be your uh your 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 last two in that one actually mm -hmm. yeah but I, I can see the cop going but we could we could get surprised and those no, roosters could know. push it forward all those poor orleans lovers yeah it, it could definitely train or, or sky cat we could be completely Finn's wrong about Finn's, Finn's bar, Finn's bar Adam. <laughs> <laughs> there's this whole closet. I mean, I think there's a good chance that Komodos could beat Steakhouse yeah. because people do love it. But yeah. I, this, that, it's interesting, that one. Okay, on the other side of this bracket, okay? I've got an idea on this. Okay, so you've got Dawa Bar taking yes. on Citrico's Lounge, okay? Yes. And Citrico's is at... Uh, is it Caribbean Beach? Grand Floor. Grand Floor. Okay. I've never been to Citrico's. Uh, Neither have I. Um, I've been to Dawa Bar one time. I've been on record about my experience. I'm not going to get into it. Um, I, I think Dawa Bar takes this hands down. I can't see it not. Um, Citrico's, I feel, is a little off the beaten path for most people. Yeah, because if you're going to the Grand Flow for drinks, you're probably going upstairs. To the Rose, yeah. yeah. How many other bars or lounges have got their own selfie paddle correct there's a picture of me with me in the group with it so that uh, bartender actually held it up for me because i was struggling right. <laughs> as one <laughs> as i normally do when i try to take a selfie and do too many I things know. So. you are notorious for just you're you are <laughs> yes i am self nope. selfie disabled is what you are <laughs> yes i am not good at it there's a few uh, during the race where my thumb is like the front <laughs> lips on during the picture That's so, so great okay and our our next bracket is uh this one no i, I got yeah uh we got hurricane hannah's up against geyser point now adam where is hurricane hannah's um hurricane hannah's is in the beach club resort okay, the beach club so now we're getting over there okay i'm pretty sure it might be their bar, pool bar pool bar and i'm not positive geyser point it's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's that's uh, Wilderness Lodge. Yeah, it's tough to beat that whole area. I mean, how many yeah. times do we have to say on this show how just excellent the theming of the structures and the vegetation Wilderness Lodge is? It's as good as Animal Kingdom or a a Animal Kingdom Lodge. I mean, it's it's so great. I think guys, to the point, we'll probably walk away with this one easy. Mm -hmm. I've never been to Hurricane Hannah's though, so it's interesting. I mean, pe people like to stay there, so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It could be an amazing bar. The bartenders could be awesome, but... Maybe they got a shtick. Every bar has a shtick. <laughs> <laughs> they use it to stir your drink. <laughs> it's a stir stick. And then the lower half of this uh, this bracket here, we got another pool bar. Um, silver screen pool bar. I'm guessing that's Art of Animation. No, oh. I think this is actually also is movies. Is this movies? Okay. Oh, that makes more sense. Uh, yeah, animation is the the big the the big blue pool with Nemo. That's right. Mm -hmm. Silver Screen Pool Bar and the Sanaa Lounge. Again, two different atmospheres. <laughs> two very. I don't personally like the bars in uh, Value Resorts. At least they they're all pool bars. So there's no place really to go. I have had decent time at Sanaa Lounge, so uh, for me, it's Sanaa Lounge. I, I know you're supposed to make these decisions based on skill versus skill alone, but Sanaa has, you got to think about the home field advantage when you go to Sanaa, and Fair. You're, you're at Animal Kingdom Atmosphere Lodge. Atmosphere counts for a bar, 100%. It, even before you get to the bar, it's a whole different level of, uh, you know, we start at the bottom and now we're here. Oh yeah, now you're here, you're at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Get a drink, hmm. if you get there at, in the evening, you can look on the windows and you can count the lizards. It's a good time. I think Sana is in Kidani. I mean, it's. Am I getting that confused? I, Adam, I don't know. I, all I, remember, I got lost on the bus trying to Fair. get there. Sure. I mean, I can look it up if you want, but I'm pretty sure Sana's in Kidani. That's still part of Animal Kingdom Lodge. Damn it, it is. It is. It's it's the same bus. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um. Yeah, I think Sana gets this one. And then uh, I think this is a good matchup here, actually. The last one, Turf Club versus Rose and Crown. Me personally, I think Rose and Crown is going to take it. I think Rose it. and Crown takes it as well, but I know a lot of people like the Turf Club. They love a lot of people love Saratoga. I love Saratoga. You're one of them. I I do love Saratoga, but I think best bang for your buck in this in oh, uh, in this matchup is Rose and Crown. Rose and Crown. Yeah. I finally got a chance to get that, and that's the best value in Disney. I agree. So yeah, I think Rose and Crown. Now, Adam, I ask you between Rose and Crown and Dawa, who takes this? Because that's going to be your final two, I think. There's a chance for Geyser Point, I think. Yeah. There's a chance for Geyser Point here. I'm going to guess Rose and Crown, just because it's... It's Epcot. It's Epcot, Part yeah. of the drinking around the world. Mm-hmm. They've been here before. They know what to expect from I this mean, run. But 
Shadow Bar has my Bloody Mary. So That's true. This is a tough one. At the end of the day, it's how well they execute. My guess for who's going to take it all might be La Cava, but uh, you never know. No. And that's why we're doing this show. We're going to try to get this out um, in, in the midst of all this is... We want as much activity from our listeners as possible and our Facebook group members. Well, that's the only way you can have the activity is be in the Facebook group. <laughs> you know, I want to see total votes uh, on these things in, in the 50s to 100s instead of, you know, the 30s and 40s. I would like this thing to blow up so uh, Michael Fernandez gets to put that uh, teaching degree to, to work. and He can do the math and sort this out and show us the metrics. Then when we have him on, he's going to be like, I don't know what the hell just happened. Yeah, that that's how most of this usually ends up going. <laughs> so. Accurate. Okay, so that is our first region. Like I said, that was the Horizon uh, region. Adam, where are we headed to next? So we are going to River Country region, another extinct area in within Disney World. Correct. So I, I'm I'm sensing a bit of a theme for Perhaps. these first two rockets. <laughs> so the first up, we got. <laughs> this isn't going to be an owl. This is one I've heard of. It's going to be an owl. Yeah, it's not even fair. Yeah, Trader Sam's going against Laguna Bar. Trader Sam's was a one seed. Got to be a one seed. And again, Laguna Bar is probably in the 20s. Um, I didn't even know if it actually, I, I would say 30s. Yeah, it, it's, you know what? They don't even have <laughs> seeds that far out. Yeah, Laguna Bar is the pool bar by Coronado Springs Resort. A resort that people don't actually look for when they're going to Disney. They just end up getting there because that's all that was left. Or they had... A conference. It kind of looks like a pool bar. I'm guessing it's a pool bar. It's supposed to be a mezcal bar, tequila mezcal bar. But I I would like to head there. That, that sounds but very I, interesting all of a sudden. Yes. Diamond in the rough, so to speak. But Trader yeah. Sam's gonna, Oh, yeah. I mean, I, there's no way. Next up, we have Grand Stand Spirits going against Alan Compass. I've been to one of them. Grand Stand Spirits is at All Star Sports. Where I've been. So it's a pool bar. Yes, it is. Alan Compass is Alan Compass. I, I can't. I think Alan Compass wins. I think it's hard to see any pool bar make it advance. In, Depends on the pool bar. Well, okay, yeah. But I don't think the value resorts have a lot going for them when it comes to pool It's bar. It's control C, control V all the way across the board. They've all got the same basic drinks. They've all got the exactly. shooting star, the magical star, whatever it is with the glow globe in it. Mm -hmm. Something with rum, something fruity. And something frozen. Uh -huh. Also with rum and fruity. <laughs> yes. And they'll be the same drink, but with different names. Exactly. And the name is just slightly themed to the theme of the resort. Just exactly. So, yeah, Ellen Compass on this one. All right. So this might be interesting because Territory Lounge happens to be one of my favorite lounges. And it's going up against Abracadabra. A lot of folks like the Abracadabra. I did until the last time I had really bad service. Oh. <laughs> like, really bad service. So, it, it, it fell a bit in my esteems. I also feel that Abracadabra is very tiny. So, it's another one of those little spots on the boardwalk, right? Well, it's connected to Flying Fish. Okay. I, I don't know if I would consider it a little spot. There is indoor seating and everything else. It's just a very small bar. And like I said, the service is very hit or miss. So that kind of bothered me a little bit. I personally enjoy my time at Territory. So we'll see where that going goes. And territory is another one up there at Wilderness Lodge. Yes. This is the inside bar. Next up is Leaping Horse Libations. And this is going up against the Gurgling suitcase. Gurgling is going to win. Leaping Horse is at the Disney Boardwalk Villas, and this is their pool bar. Okay. Now, this is a moderate resort, or I think, I'm sorry, this is a deluxe resort, so the bar itself looks pretty cool, where it kind of looks like it's in an old carousel building. Right. But I've never had a drink there, and I don't know if it's someplace I'd go out of the way to have a drink at, whereas Gurgling Suitcase I've actually been to. So right, right. <laughs> I have to go for the one I didn't And that's it. Uh, Gurgling is Old Key West, right? Yes, uh -huh. correct. I'm, I'm remembering some shit tonight, Adam. This is this this is yeah, this is I huge am, for I Mikey. I am okay? very proud of you. Um, You're doing very because, well tonight. I mean, Mikey. yeah, I've not done hardly any prep on this. I just remember. First off, I'm going to be honest with you. Of all of the bars and lounges in in Disney, that has my favorite name. Well, it's a very cool bar. And, and, I like. Now, it what is they also do. pretty small. It's just kind of like a corner kind of thing, you know. Yes, but correct. the decor mm -hmm. inside is just really cool, and the fact that you know. Mm -hmm. 
they're shooting for like a traveling salesman kind of vibe with it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I really do like this one. I think I've had something there after eating at Olivia's. Yes, that's exactly it. That's exactly when we were there. We were heading out and just hung out there and had a few drinks, so. I, I enjoyed it. And again, it's stupid, but there's just something phonetically pleasing about the word gurgling. I, is, is it all yes. the G's or the GL? It's fucking, thank the I Phoenicians. The thank the Phoenicians for that, <laughs> that lounge right there. <laughs> okay, well. For this side. Trader Sam's. Or territory. As much as I don't want to admit it, yeah, it would have to be Trader Sam's. And it's not a bar I go to all the time. No. I think I actually have a lot more fun on the patio bar. Right. What? But I think that might actually get lumped in with it just because it is still... It shouldn't, though, because they don't have the same drinks. They don't? No. Oh, I didn't know that. You can get a spiky pineapple at the Teak Terrace, but you cannot get one in Trader Sam's. Okay. And you can actually have a conversation <laughs> on the Teak right. Terrace. And there's usually never a wait time so it's true i personally like the tiki tower i like trader sam's i get the draw i just for me if i can't really have a conversation after a while it becomes a little yeah. bit too much of a sensory overload situation it's, and, trader sam's is absolutely an experience that you need mm -hmm. to do and you know everybody says that everybody about has everything to do it it is, oh no you need to do this no but i mean trader sam's is a fun uh experience it's drinks in a show and the show evolves depending on the folks having drinks. So, yeah, yeah, this could be fun between Trader Sam's and uh, Territory, actually, is what I think the final mm -hmm. two is going to be. It could be, or it could be Abracadabra, honestly. Yeah. There's a bunch of ways this can go. This is this should be an interesting one. I agree. And then the other side, I actually think this first one could also be a little interesting. I know we got City Works Brewing, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's like a six-word title um, for the name yes. of it, the beer place in, in Disney Springs, City Works restaurant and brewery thing uh, mm -hmm. uh, up against dahlia lounge which is that riviera no 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 no, no. Yeah, Coronado Coronado. I, I get them building. flipped up all the time no i get it that's obvious because of the uh salvador dali yes yes okay Woo. had that right and i know a lot of people like that one i personally have never been this is the one that i need to get here yeah, i need to get exactly. here i need to get here but because it's in a resort yeah makes it that much more difficult to get to so eventually i will make it here i just don't have a timeline as to when. CityWorks has the edge just for location and ease of access. Mm -hmm. But Dial Lounge, everybody who's gone there braves Absolutely. about Absolutely. And again, I think this is another situation where you have two completely different atmospheres. Mm -hmm. And that may end up being more of a deciding factor between the two. Not everybody that. wants a little uh, louder atmosphere of CityWorks. CityWorks does get very loud because it's a it's big. It's not right. just like a lounge area. It's not just right. a bar. It's, it's, it's a full big restaurant. and it's also kind of really open. So everything... Cavernous. Yeah. Yes. It's extremely cavernous. I agree with that. So everything kind of echoes. And last time we were there, the food wasn't as great as it used to be. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens with this one. Well, next after that, Martha's Vineyard which mm -hmm. I had to look up. That's Yacht and Beach Club. <laughs> Fair. And Stargazers, which is that the big ass telescope in Disney Springs or no? <laughs> the globe? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> I didn't look that one up. I just assumed that's where it was. Stargazers is the bar that's part of Planet, Planet Hollywood. Hollywood. What was yeah. I going to say Planet 51? Is that a fucking stupid Disney animated movie about Martians? I think. It is. Okay. So that's, yeah, the, <laughs> the big telescope. Okay. <laughs> Shit, I don't, I don't know. I don't really even have an opinion on this one. I think I actually drank at Martha's Vineyards before. I don't think I've ever had a drink at Stargazers. This is where you go to hear really bad karaoke. At Stargazers? Oh, yeah. Oh, and okay. and you can hear it, like, throughout all of Springs when it's oh, going on and it's super loud. I think this, whoever wins this bracket easily loses the next Absolutely round. they do. I think the problem... The biggest hurdle Stargazers would have is the fact that there's a lot of other places in Springs to get a drink. Granted, it's not going up against other places in Springs to get a drink. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one for me. I mean, I have gotten drink at Stargazers during one of the sheet ups, but people were running them to me kind of situation. It wasn't, <laughs> I was going up and you getting You received them, so. them from that specific. Yeah, okay. I, they all came from that location because it was the closest thing to the food trucks where it didn't have much of a line. So. Okay, and after that, we literally have the Battle of Springs. I'm sorry, Dockside. I mean, I, I agree, Dockside would get it, but I think this is maybe the only time you get two Disney Springs matched up in, in the yeah 
in the whole thing. But Dockside. Dock, so, yeah, Dockside. Dockside versus Boathouse, my opinion, is always going to be Dockside on that. It's a better, it's, it's fun. You have live music. Even sometimes it's not great, but you have live you music. Do. This time, this past trip, it was really good. There hasn't been a trip that I haven't got a drink yet. Yeah, and they they, they have seasonal drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot of different kind of margaritas. Mm-hmm. So, and, uh, you know, you can people watch. But Boathouse, again. It's solid. I just don't think I've ever sat in the lounge. Is is this the Duck Duck Raz place? The floating duck with the Possibly. raspberry blue drink? Everybody said it was awful, so I stopped looking for yeah. it. <laughs> to be honest with you. Everybody said, everybody who had it said, don't get it. You will not like it. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's it's it's, Fair it's Windex with rubber duck. It, it's Instagrammy is that's what it. I was told. But that's pretty much all it has going for it. And our last matchup in the River Country region Crockett's Tavern. It's a Wilderness Lodge. Correct. And Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, also at Springs. Uh, I think Jock Lindsay's gets this. Yes, I um, agree. Whether or not the drinks are better than Crockett's, I don't know. But Jock Lindsay's has, in my opinion, way more to offer than Fort Wilderness. I, will, I say that, but right now, Fernandez is probably screaming because they both love. Wilder, uh, Fort Wilderness. For some reason, the menu stayed up when I was doing my research. And just looking at this, they have a moonshine cocktail flight. Not real moonshine. Well, obviously not. It's got a bar but... code on it. That's not real moonshine. Yeah. <laughs> they also have a seasonal old fashioned. Ooh. There's a few drinks that, you know, again, we'll never make it over there as much as I would like to sit there and say, I mean, they also have like a pina colada and all the other yeah, like the, normal. Yes, your pool bar drinks and stuff. Yeah, but this actually has a pretty interesting menu. But I think it's a niche. I don't think it's going to no, win. It's a really niche location. Yeah. Regardless, someone from Disney Springs is going to make it into the final two of this side of the bracket, I think. I don't see how it wouldn't. This could potentially end up Springs on Springs. I don't know. Uh, who, who do I think would go all the way? I mean, I would hope it's Dockside. I would hope it's Dockside. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Jocks. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a... That's going to be a fucking fight when those two go mm-hmm. at each other because it should be dockside because i don't particularly like all the drinks at jocks so yeah i think the theming's great but as drink wise nah, just you. my personal opinion on it mario would tell me i'm wrong at this point <laughs> well uh we've probably been yelled at so far by most everybody mm-hmm. so okay our next region adam where is it again we are in toontown fair Toontown. Hey, uh, is that still around? No, it is not. And this isn't the one that people fight over. That was at Disneyland, right? Yes, correct. That was in Disneyland. For this one, it's going to get interesting in this This bracket. This is going to get eaten. So on this side, we have Nomad going up against Chosa de Margarita. They're both in a park. Yeah, but Nomad's just a better lounge, in my opinion. It is, but I think a lot of people are going to think, you know, I can just walk up. I mean, there's going to be a line to get a margarita. But there's probably going to be a wait to get into Nomad, yeah, as well. So both either way, it's not going to be just walk up and leave with a drink right off the bat. Nomad Lounge, you've got food options. I just prefer Nomad. Yeah. Nomad's one of my favorite lounges. So okay. Also, Polite Pig and Bar Riva. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Bar Riva, I've been to, and it's going up. It's the Riviera Pool Bar. I keep on confusing yeah. it with another bar for some reason. And Polite Pig. If this was years ago. When Polite Pig first opened and the prices were reasonable, yeah. Polite Pig would walk away with this. But right now, the way Polite Pig is, I, I can't say that this is going to be an easy fight for them. I think it will. I think it will. If you look at the numbers, you look at the people, the people's choice is what is their voice. And I yeah, really think you've got though. more folks walking by and, and and grabbing a drink at Polite Pig than Bar Riva. Eh, only bourbon drinkers, though. And it's it's a name. I just I I think Polite Pig gets this one. We will we we can agree to disagree. Yeah, politely I without don't want it to be Polite Pig because I feel Polite Pig has gone down. Oh, I'll, I agree. Personally, I agree with you on that. But this isn't about who I prefer. It's who I think's going to get it. And I think see, Polite but Pig we gets have it. a lot of people in the group who do not drink bourbon or whiskey. That's key there because if you're only looking at the drink, you're not looking at the food side, right? You're just looking at that bar. Right. And that bar is very hard to get a seat at. I've never had a problem. You go in the middle of the day. Yes. If you go 
later on in the evening and sometimes even early afternoon, you're not getting a seat. No, I'm, I'm going to bed by that point. I'm talking four or five o'clock. I'm more of like, you know, my AARP card. I'm an early bird oh, special guy. Up, when I'm comes. older than you. <laughs> it's not going to work here. I know. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, look, we got another uh, interesting matchup. Well, a- a- well I was going to say um, Disney Springs matchup. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> And this is, it, yeah, that's, uh, is, yeah, exactly. And we have Enzo's hideaway going against Wine Bar George. For personal reasons that I will not continue to discuss, I am just going to say Wine Bar George. Um, I understand those reasons. And uh, I, honestly, I enjoy Wine Bar George. If I so. put those reasons aside, I think Wine Bar George takes it as well. Mm-hmm. Even though I've never been there, from what I understand, the service there is really, 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 yeah. really good. And everybody has a great time. Not just the drinks are great. Everybody has a great time yes. while they're there. And that says a lot mm-hmm. about the place. Correct. And they have taste. Uh, wine Bar George should win this easy. Next up, we have Outer Rim versus going up against Tambu. Uh, I don't even think this is really a contest. No, I agree. Tambu's going to walk away with us. I've never honestly been to the Outer Rim. I've been in a chair that I've been told this is the outer rim and I've looked around and I didn't see anything that looked like a lounge. I was just in a chair and then drinks showed up. Outer rim is, it almost reminds me of a count. Like if a bar can be counter service, that's the outer rim. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's counter service, but it's definitely not, you know, grab and go because they'll make you your drink no. and stuff. And it's in like one of the most expensive resorts on property. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, <laughs> They fit it where they could is kind of this is the <laughs> feeling that you get. It's like it's like if, if a, an airline ticketing counter closed down because that airline went out of business all of a sudden and they said, hey, just put a bar in right there. Boom. That's the outer rim. Outer rim is like the, the original lounge of the contemporary resort. It, it's been there for quite yeah. a long time, but there's nothing truly memorable about it. And I think it kind of reminds me of every other hotel bar I've ever been to. What gets me about it is it's literally just in the middle of the walkway kind of thing. No, it isn't. Is it not? Is there... Is, no, is, it's off to the side. It's off to the side. Okay. Is there half walls around it? No. Or there's no walls around it? Because as I remember it... Like I said, it's not memorable yeah, enough for me. Just, the drinks aren't memorable. The, the atmosphere is... Okay, is, you know yes, what? Chef Mickey's I was going right to say, there. this is... Grab a drink while you're waiting for your Chef Mickey's reservation to pop open. Or leave to go, quote, to the bathroom and then run by Outer Rim and get you a double of anything they got and uh, down it and go back to Chef Mickey's so you can finish that lobster mac and cheese. Outer Rim is not memorable. It's not. Tambu is going to take this easy. No, I mean, Tambu is one of, I don't want to say the flu, the flu. I don't want to say the flu lounges. I don't want to say the few lounges. <laughs> That has a a really well crafted uh, drinks menu that you won't mm-hmm. find anywhere else, and and right. that's almost everything on Tambu's menu, including mm-hmm. our Lord and Savior, the Lapu Lapu. Correct. But I mean, these are two resorts going at it at this point. Mm-hmm. Two deluxe resorts going at yeah. it at this point, with two very very different fields. But again, Tambu Tambu, whereas Outer Room, you can almost walk in and get a seat all the time. Yeah. Tambu. Not always the case because you have a lot of people who are waiting for their reservation at Trader Sam's. To go eat <laughs> at, no, not even Trader oh, Sam's. We always like, regame Trader Sam's whenever we. <laughs> yes, correct. Because God knows when you're going to get called exactly. downstairs to go in. And now you only have like a certain window to show up before they give your spot away. Yep. And Tambu opens pretty early, so you can grab a drink before you go to your Ohana breakfast. But that's the problem. Everybody who's waiting for Ohana reservation yeah. ends up sitting in that Tambu lounge area and leaves no room for you to get anywhere or get near the bar sometime. Yep. So so this, I don't think it's going to be an interesting fight, but I think Tambu's going to win. I think the fight gets Should interesting win. as we advance with this particular bracket. Oh, yeah. Just like the, the round twos of this fight mm-hmm. should be interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not even sure who takes the top one. Uh, Nomad Polite, I think, both advance. Uh, I think Nomad gets yeah. that. The bottom one, I mean, between Enzo's and Wine Bar, ah. Enzo's and Wine Bar, I don't think people go into Enzo's often for just a drink. Yeah. I see Wine Bar and Tambu moving, and then after that, all bets are off. I mean, it could be a battle of lounges. Yeah. Nomad and Tambu. I, I can see that happening pretty easily. All right. Well, the other side of this bracket, again, Mickey's. 
Toontown Fair region. We've got Tuto Gusto up against Thirsty River Bar. I've never been to Tuto Gusto. I don't think I have either. Lounge wise, but I've been to Thirsty River multiple times. I, I, I have too. And um, honestly, the fact that Animal Kingdom stays 115 degrees year round <laughs> is without a doubt the best promotion for stopping and having a drink at all of their bars. So I would have to go with Thirsty River on this one. Same. And after that, we've got, okay, the, the Forbidden Lounge and Raglan Road. I don't know where the Forbidden Lounge is. This is also another fight that's downtown Disney. I'm um, sorry, oh. Spring. So no, we, we should call it downtown Disney because all this shit's dead and gone. <laughs> well, the, all, this is the downtown Disney March Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Morimoto Asia. Okay. Is that like upstairs on the patio or something? Yeah. I have never been to the Forbidden Lounge, so I know nothing about it. I find Ragland Road extremely loud and obnoxious, so this can go but, either way, in my the opinion. Wa- no, the walk-up ball, that's called the hole in the wall, so yeah. that's not on here. So, yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I've been to Ragland. The, the drinks are fine, but it is stupid loud. Yes. And that's before the cloggers come out. Yeah, it's just a very loud. It is an talk. assault on your uh, hearing. Senses. And they make some pretty good food, though. True. But this isn't about food. Um, I, I mean, I figure Raglan gets this because people are at the very least more familiar with the location. Yeah, I agree with that. I've heard, again, heard great things about Morimoto, just never made it up there. The lower bracket, we have Muddy Rivers Pool Bar against Low Tide Lou's. Muddy Rivers, that's Port Orleans. Correct. One of them. And then Low Tide Lou's, that's Typhoon Lagoon's drink stop, right? Yes. Okay, so I guess I've been to one of these then, thanks to uh, Rex's uh, freaking foam rave party that we went to one <laughs> night, uh, where Disney absolutely blatantly stole that idea from Adam. Yes, um, we won't I will, talk I will about go that. Down, I'll die on that hill uh, <laughs> before I die on February. I'll die on that one. Um, uh episode oh it was insert number early here. it was fucking yeah, early it was super early i don't yeah, know I don't how know. this is gonna go at all i don't know i don't think I don't... either one of these are popular enough to know these are like two seed ones going at it if i'm looking no no see low, low numbers the other way. low numbers low numbers two seed 20s I mean, these, these, these are just but you know somebody's gotta win yeah that's how this one is yeah this may not even get a lot of votes this is gonna this whole bottom portion is gonna get weird i feel uh yeah because next up, you have Jelly Rolls versus Baseline Tap House. Both of them known for their music. <laughs> <laughs> to one extent or the other. I think with Jelly Rolls, it has a cover. Does it? Yeah. Oh, it's right? not, not, I don't know. There have been. Yeah. Uh, Jelly Rolls has a cover. I went there this trip for the first time. Okay. Okay. Well, how was your experience there? I had was a blast. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Have you ever had fun? bitching about how uh much food you didn't get on your charcuterie board at baseline (laughs) well it's just baseline i think jelly rolls is going to win this for people who have been there but baseline might eke it out it's a hard very hard see a lot of people that go to baseline baseline has a fan base people that go there religiously the problem is with baseline is you can't get a table sometimes you You it's like you gotta be outside if it's exactly if it's hot you're dying yeah and you're fighting birds for your pretzel i think this is the first trip i didn't have a beer at baseline yeah i had a beer someplace else or drink someplace else it's just it for me i would pay jelly rolls because of the entertainment they're dueling pianos is a lot of fun yeah we couldn't unfortunately we could not get them to play opp but we tried well, um, bless you for that <laughs> who goes all the way here is it going to end up being uh God, I don't know. This, this side, I mean, this is a hard of all of it. I think baseline or Raglan. I think. I hope Thirsty River goes. I hope Thirsty River I hope goes. Thirsty River goes, but I can see Raglan, yeah, and probably Jelly Rolls is my guess. I don't think baseline is a hard. Eh, true. And our last one is the Adventurers Club. Adventurers Club. We have a lot of weirdness going on. We have Tunin Lounge going sure. up against it. Atlantic Dance Hall. Okay. Different atmospheres. Just a little. One has seating. One has a floor. 
tune in. I think, think they got rid of seating. Yeah, Atlantic Dance Hall has some tables and chairs. True. And that's the one time I've been to tune in is when I, I got me my drink and I sat down crisscross applesauce in front of the black and white TV. And I, y'all could have just fucking left me there all day. And I'd have been happy. It's tiny. It is. You want to talk about small lounges, though. This is a small lounge. Atlantic is humongous. And uh, infamous. And short staff. If it gets busy. Yeah, they also won't play OPP. <laughs> but they will play some genuine. Yes. <laughs> but only like 15 seconds of the song before they mix it into something else. Yeah. Not even long enough for Sydney to get in her groove. I'm guessing TuneIn is going to go. I think Atlantic is going to pick up a lot of votes just because of Sheeter Prom. Possibly, but... It may not pick up enough. I don't know what this. We'll see. That'll be interesting to see it, to see who advances there. We're going to Cruise Cup Lounge next, going up against Enchanted Rose. Cruise Cup Lounge is located in the Yacht Club. Okay. For those who don't know, and Enchanted Rose is in Grand Flow. We're just going to go ahead and say that, that everybody doesn't know where Cruise Cup Lounge is. Yeah. Because I've never even heard of it. It's a small lounge. Enchanted Rose is going to win, but God, it's just a fucking expensive. Uh, yes. I think a lot of that is just you pay for the privilege to be there. Yes. Correct. <laughs> it feels like it anyway. It's not Meisner's anymore. No, not even close to it. So next up, we have the Bellevue Lounge going up against Spice Road. I know where one of these is. Bellevue is located, I just said, oh, did I not say? It's in Boardwalk. I'm pretty. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I don't know. No one complains about Spice Road, but also very few people talk about Spice Road. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. If, if any of them gets it, it would be Spice Road just because people are like, hey, that's in that place. It's in the park, and they do have some good drinks there. I, now, does Spice Road have my fig drink, or is that at Restaurant Marrakesh? I don't know. I don't remember where I got it. Because it, it's kind of hard to figure out how this bar worked and what right. it was actually part of. Because it was yes. kind of like it had its own entryway, and then you had to walk up to the bar, and I actually got confused, and me and this other lady who ran the, ne- the day before were like, are we doing this right? And of course we were not. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little confusing, but it did, they did have a fig mule, I want to say, with fig vodka in it, and it was really tasty. So, okay. If it's the right place I'm thinking about. Next up is Barcelona Lounge and the Edison. I hope Barcelona wins. It won't. Okay, so here's the thing with this. I had a lot of fun the times I've never been to the Edison. If I'm just looking at it as a bar. Yeah. Or a club. The food was not good. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It just was bad. And the last time we all went, the music was bad. <laughs> this Skype call has better quality than <laughs> that uh, experience with the music. I think if you go to the Edison, you got you to gotta get all the way down at the bottom where the music is live. If you're there for drinks, I think. If they're bringing it back to what it was. Okay, yeah. Like with the dancing and the, and the floor show and all that, we had a lot of fun. This might have passed its prime, and we don't know if it's ever going to be coming back the way it was. So I, I really honestly feel the Edison will win because Barcelona Lounge, I don't think many people talk about or go right. to. I think Edison probably advances through that bottom bracket and tune in goes across the top. It's going to be hard to beat. And just for people who don't know, Barcelona is at Coronado Spring. Again, if you're there for, you know, company business, <laughs> you're Fair probably enough. familiar with it. Okay, the other side. This is an interesting fight. Of this uh, bracket, you have the Brown Derby. Um, Adam and I discussed this. Probably is the lounge. Outside, yeah. Outside. Up against Splitsville, where I have never been inside of, but have had many drinks from. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting flight, fight, because I've had multiple drinks from both of these locations. <laughs> and, and I want to say this is where the shop and gin really took off and started. And that was that at Splitsville? No, at Brown that Derby. Was Derby? Okay. It's where I get it. That's, that's politicking, and we don't do that at the polls. Who said I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a hard fight. Yeah, I know a lot of people will probably see Splitsville as a whole and be like, shit, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love Splitsville. That wins. But I've never been to the Brown Derby, so I, I don't really have an opinion on that one. I think this is going to be a hard fight. There's been many a time I've sat in and gotten severely wasted at the Brown Derby. <laughs> had to be asked to leave. No, never had to be asked to leave. I wasn't that bad. Oh, 
Don't ever get that bad. It's no fun. Trust me. It's just one of those places where you can just kind of hang out and chill. Okay. Uh, next up, and this is a bizarre matchup, the Barefoot Pool Bar up against the Paddlefish Rooftop Bar. Neither one of these are going to make it very far. But someone has to win. And I think it'll be Paddlefish because people at least know what the Paddlefish restaurant is. I agree. Uh, and after that, this one isn't even fair. <laughs> this isn't even fair. I don't even know. This is this is the match to watch, folks, if you want to see some great defense. <laughs> Top of the World Lounge. A, a definite one seed against Boardwalk Joe's. <laughs> Which I did the research. It looks like it's literally just like a margarita stand yeah. on the side of the boardwalk. I have no idea. I have been to the top of the world. I have. No, I might have walked by boardwalk Joe's or gotten a drink from them, but I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to persuade anybody, but what kind of name is Boardwalk Joe's for a margarita stand? Fair point. I couldn't tell you. Boardwalk Jose's, maybe? That at least lends itself to what, what you're going to get? Why can't you just name it Boardwalk Margarita? Walkerita. There you go. But anyway, Top of the World takes this one. After that, the last uh, matchup on this side of the bracket, and in general, House of Blues versus Victoria Fall. This one could be interesting, I think. I don't think a lot of people have been to House of Blues. I don't know. I think more people have than been to Victoria Falls. The Disney Springs crowd has definitely been to house of blues i love victoria falls <laughs> it's one of my favorite lounges it is just uh animal kingdom lodge it has so much going for it it's yet it, well victoria falls has a way better atmosphere of course that obviously is in animal kingdom lodge mm-hmm. correct much like the the lounges inside of uh wilderness lodge this is transportative yeah. Instead of uh, House of Blues is an outdoor mall. I mean, they do have an inside. I don't know if they have a bar inside, though. No, well, no. I mean, when I say outdoor mall, I mean, Disney Springs itself is an outdoor mall. Oh, okay. No, I, I would have to go Victoria Falls. I would like Victoria Falls to win. I don't think it will, but that that's my choice. It's not winning against Top of the World. Neither one of these are winning against Top of the World. So I don't think it really matters all that much. This comes down to... The only way you experience Top of the World is being or traveling with DVC membership. Yeah, but I think we've had enough cheaters up in Top of the World at one point or another to, we, to sway we have, that. But uh, we also have grown. Truth. Hopefully we get some new uh, some new votes cast here. And I don't really have a pick for the whole thing. I mean, honestly, history would say Top of the World wins it all. Not the Edison. It'll be interesting. I mean, it well, it not could be. I think all of these are going to have some matchups that get interesting. Yes, but they're only interesting if we get votes. Correct. Make sure you uh, make your voice known, folks. The polls will be posted every day, and then they'll be pinned every day until I don't think Mike actually set a time that voting stops. I think he says it maybe on the post when he posts them, but Usually I don't does. remember. They don't run till like midnight or, or any shit like no. that. So they'll get in there and shut down voting in time. That way you can't sneak your vote in because you're, you know, a little late. No absent <laughs> ballot, uh, or not absent. Absentee? Pro-rated, pro, no prorated ballots. Prorated? Po- post-rated? Post-dated? Post-dated. No post-dated <laughs> ballots. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking do checks. I don't know. That's what I meant, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's all the same. Uh, yeah, it means the same. It, it balances out. It's it does. Fine. No prolapse <laughs> checks. That's what we're saying. Oh, okay. no. That means something very different. Oh. <laughs> no dangling chads or whatever it was. No dangling chads. <laughs> Fucking Chad. Fucking Florida. <laughs> we're not that kind of... Uh... No election committee here. We're just we're just trying to find a <laughs> best place to get a drink and have fun. Like Michael says, this is about fun. We're going to absolutely encourage uh, polite discourse about this in, in the comments whenever he posts his polls. Just keep things all in the spirit of fun. So absolutely join us over there. Catch up if this comes out after the first couple have been posted. It'll be uh, a lot of fun. And and again, I'm going to say this, uh, unless we say it every year, thank you to Michael and Anthony Fernandez yes, for, for working on this and keeping up with it. 
and seeing it through even uh, the years where the votes are lean. And hopefully this year the votes become stacked. Well, there, there's always those few challengers that get an obscene amount of votes. Every, yes. Yeah. Yes, there are. That's when everybody's behind the scenes saying, you better vote for this. We all got to vote. We all got to make this happen. Exactly. Uh, and then, you know, every year there's the one that everybody wears the shirts for, and it's just Nodless going to make it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nodless 2024, folks. Not this year. That's uh, no, this no year. drinks. No drinks. It's, no it's drinks simple. this year. I know we've been through it, and it was fucking, it was a lot. Again, it was, what, 32 times 4? Uh, no, 16 times 4. <laughs> I was just going to say. <sighs> Maria, if it was like 32 <laughs> times 4 divided by 2. 32 times 4, we'd be here for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, okay, so 32 times 2 is the same as 16 times 4, right? It's both 64. Yes. Yeah, so 64 teams, a lot to go through. I don't remember all of them that we said. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what are the big matches to look for, Adam? Uh, but uh, we we mentioned it as we went. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> so just much. Go back and I, I listen to this episode again. You'll feel. I mean, if somebody has a pen and paper while they're going through it, Russell. Yeah, you can check up with our picks and see how well we did. If you want to play along, make your own picks and post them and see how well you can do. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, Michael Fernandez has actually posted an Excel spreadsheet and pinned it in the group, so you can download that and print it off and play along as we go. It's got four tabs, five tabs, counting the uh, final four bracket, uh, the fuzzy four bracket, which we didn't get to because we don't know those yet. This was fun. I'm glad we did this. This was actually a lot of fun. This came out a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that's that's the bracket as it is. That's all 64 teams and how it uh, how it looks on day zero. Tomorrow is day one, and we will begin seeing how how this shakes down with some first matchups that uh, should be pretty interesting. So, Adam, you're back from Princess. Uh, yes. Are there anything, are there any more events coming up? What well, we have a bunch of cheaters who will be running Springtime Surprise coming up soon. Other than that, we will have an official sheet up. Dates to be determined. We just started talking about it ourselves. So once we have figured out the dates, we'll let you know as soon as we know. Probably third or fourth quarter, if I was going to guess. As soon as we figured it out, we will let you know. <laughs> And Mikey, what about our gaming group? Uh, the gaming group is uh, well, it, it's interesting because I believe the old Star Wars Battlefront is being right. rebuilt and re-released, and not rebuilt. No, it's just being re-released for current gen consoles. It looks just as awful as it used to. No, I heard. I thought they cleaned it up. Did they not? Uh, the trailer footage I saw of the original Star Wars Battlefront that's being re-released literally looks like a Xbox 360. Or... But we get both of them now. Yes. Wait. An old NA... I think you get Battlefront 1 and 2. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the trailer I saw was like a pretty much all Battlefront 1 footage. And it, Fair enough. You know, it looked like, you know. <laughs> no more loot boxes? No, I hope not. I do... I mean, I just watched the trailer. I didn't. Well, they, this is the whole controversy when this game came out was with right. all the loot boxes in it. And from what I understand, there's a chance of cross-platform. I read that. So because it's going to be coming out, obviously it's going to be on your Steam. Is it and, not out? I don't, Adam. I said I saw the trailer. That means I didn't read jack shit about you put me on the spot. You ask me to give you words. I give you words. But I didn't expect you to go on with Battlefront shit. I didn't expect to talk about the gaming channel chat page. <laughs> Come join us at facebook.com <laughs> slash group slash three sheets gaming because we do gaming on the weekends. Some people fly. Some people fight goblins and orcs and shit. <laughs> I don't know what, what Chris does. What's he doing? Oh, he's is he he's Starfielding, right? No, I don't think anybody is Starfielding. <laughs> Actually, to be honest with you, I that's the whole reason he bought the Xbox. He was the game is not good. So... <laughs> well, we don't Starfield. I don't think anybody's Starfielding. And Final Fantasy VII's 
part oh, 300 right. is about to come out soon and so come join us on our gaming group we can also have a fitness group which is three sheets to the finish line if you're in any kind of interested in health or just improving your race speeds or working out please feel free to join us there we have all level of activities and we are running the apple fitness challenge which will be i don't know pretty much is in charge of and runs with it every month also yep. if you are running a race and you need charity bib we do have a monthly charity post as well um yeah uh, find us on our facebook group facebook.com slash group slash three sheets we welcome uh all levels of disney fanaticism but with that that's going to do it for us uh this evening we're going to get out of here enjoy the rest of march madness and this is not goodbye see you real soon so good night good night Thank you!